Jenny wants to hear from you. Call 888-94-STARS now. If you've got a problem you need to address, pick up the phone and ease the stress. Just ask Jenny for goodness sakes. Just ask Jenny, that's all it takes. If you're listening and you need advice, Jenny will save you like a flotation device. If you're at your desk or in your car, just ask on bail or stuck behind bars. Call 888-94-STARS. 888-94-STARS. That's right. 888-94-STARS. It's time to talk to you guys. How can I help you? There's got to be some shit going on. I got backup with me this time, though. Guy that really knows what he's talking about. Promoting his book, Wired for Love and Wired for Dating. See, he does know what he's talking about. We've had him on before. Welcome back. Stan, how are you? Hey, Jenny. So they say I know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Stan, well, if you're back for the second time, that means you're okay in my book. Oh, thank you. Because I'm very picky. Thank you. But uh, I want to open up the phone lines. I, I asked uh, for for some help because, you know, no, no one has the perfect relationship. Every relationship needs work, um, including, like, you know, Donnie and I have the, the world's, I think, most beautiful, authentically passionate. People always say, oh, you're going to get out of that honeymoon phase You know, any minute now, um, it's only going to last six months, and it's been, you know, over three years, and I still have butterflies. Cool. But that doesn't mean that uh, we have to do work on our relationship. Yes, it depends on what the work, by work, what you mean. I mean, people say uh, relationships take work, but uh, everyone means something different. What do you mean? I mean by work, which is, you know, at this age in our lives, We obviously come with a lot of, uh, I'll use the word baggage, even though I don't like that term, Uh but we come with a lot of history. And even though that history is behind us, we as um, human beings tend to project our past into our present relationships until we work through them. And that's how we kind of transmute them. I'm using big, weird words, but, um, you know, if something happened in even my childhood, um, which is, I always believe there's a core issue maybe stemming back from, let's use the word abandonment, even though I didn't have that issue. Uh But in, you know, current relationships, people can feel abandoned just by your partner saying, I'm going out for, um, I'm going to the baseball game with my friends. Right. And it can trigger a childhood wound. So in terms of me and Donnie doing the work, uh, very early on, I introduced him to Byron Katie, who's a guru that I love, Uh and and the work, and said, you know, I would love for us, before we even start having problems, to really learn about each other's past and our issues and to learn some core tools in our relationship, how to communicate with each other, Like, do you do silent treatment? How do I, you know, let's just figure it all out so we have uh, tools to go by, some rule, like a rule book for our relationship. What helps me open up? What what makes me shut down? Um, It helps me have more compassion, too, for for him um, when I know about his past and his wounds. So I think that's really about getting curious with one another. And that's what I mean by doing the work. Right. Well, you know, what you said is actually quite normal, natural. We are, we are animals that are memory-based. Everything we do is by memory. Uh, in fact, uh, most of our day is basically automatic. It's run by memory. So the fact that we're with somebody who becomes deep family to us, like Donnie is to you, somebody who's one degree of everybody we've ever known, that they would trip or do something uh, that would trigger a memory – uh, through the tilt of a head or rolling of the eyes or going to a baseball game, that is going to happen with every relationship of this kind. Uh, it's supposed to happen because we are, like I said, most of the time not thinking. We mostly don't know what we're doing or why. Uh, real time is way too fast, so we're operating by memory. And that memory includes everything and everyone that has ever made us feel good or bad. 888-94-STARS. I'm going to give a real <clears throat> 
good、uh, typical example that maybe people can relate to. For instance, I was in a relationship years ago where、um, it was it was an abusive relationship, and the guy had put a curfew on my phone. If I was on my phone after a certain time, I would get in big trouble. So when he would walk in on me, I would throw my phone across the room to try to like, I was on the phone. Right. I know it's past I, 6 p.m. I didn't do anything.、Right. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, that carried over into my next relationships, where they had issues with an ex of theirs cheating on them, who、right. would hide their phone. Right. So I am being triggered by you know being surprised by someone walking in the room, <laughs> and his history is someone cheating on him. So you can imagine、right. how those two can collide if we aren't open and communicating with each other. Yeah, Jenny, that happens all the time, all the time. Exactly what you described.、Uh, one person does something because they're afraid. They're remembering something that was threatening to them. They don't know that the look on their face or their behavior is actually. Actually, triggering the other person's,、uh, you know, threat response because of a memory that they have, and now we're off to the races.、Um, this is why I say that people are mostly misunderstanding each other most of the time, most of the time, and that's one prime example. It's exactly eight 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 ninety four stars. I know we have a lot of questions coming in, but I want to ask you: Are there any issues you would say completely doom a relationship? I think the only thing that would doom a relationship, other than structural issues, structural issues like, you know, we 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 met each other,、um, we, we were having affairs on our on our spouses, and then we dumped them and we got married, and now we don't trust each other. That that's a structural issue, issue、mm. and that's a problem. But、uh, I, I think what could doom a relationship is. Uh, the inability to stay calm、uh, moment by moment. In other words, these people have triggered each other so much that it becomes biological, and that their threat response is so rapid and so acute. Just like what you talked about, my fear of you triggers a fear that you have of me, and now we're on fire at the very same time. Usually, when couples are on the fire on fire at the very same time, it's it's desperate because one isn't、uh, able to put the other one out. So if they're, you know, if, if you're being triggered at the same time all the time, that's a very difficult system to break because it's biological. It is, and that can cause major havoc in a relationship unless it's talked about. And that's why I keep saying the word: get curious with one another. Get curious with one another. Find out why. What、oh, I forgot the sentence that Donnie and I used, but instead of、um, <clears throat> blowing up, saying, <laughs> "I noticed you get." Um, I noticed you bumped. What did this remind you of in the past? Right, and that kind of helped us remember something that you know made us realize, oh my God, you're not my dad. Oh my God, you're not my ex. Right, <laughs> you're you. Right, it breaks the spell、uh, and allows people to see the person in front of them instead of seeing the person in their head. So that's another thing. The other thing is, do you guys、uh, spend a lot of time in close proximity, looking at each other? You and Donny? Oh, always. Okay, so a lot of problems co-、uh, exist because people aren't paying attention, and we really need to pay attention in order to break the automation of the brain. The, the brain is always on automatic. So, in order to break that and to return to an earlier time when you were novel, is attention and presence. And so, when people are in trouble, that's the time to put down your phone, to move across the room, to go face to face and eye to eye, and、uh, and to start to slow it down. Otherwise, you're going to Uh, you know, rapidly descend into some kind of of、uh, misunderstanding, and it's going to seem real, but it really isn't. Do you believe the whole "once a cheater, always a cheater" mentality?、Uh, no, I don't think that's true. But I think that it, that somebody's you know behavior is a good predictor of what they're going to do. It doesn't mean they're you know that that is、uh, fait accompli. But if you have somebody who keeps cheating, and that's what they've done most of their life, and they kind of say, "I really don't know that I'm cut out for you know、uh, monogamy," you might want to think twice about that person. <laughs>、um, you know, you asked me before uh, uh, something that would doom a couple. The other thing is, by the way, are、um, are deal breakers that are sleeper cells, and deal breakers that are sort of swept under the rug. That if we really came to terms on on this issue, you and I couldn't be together. Right, because for your, you know, the example, I want to be with other people. I don't really want to be with just one person, and you actually believe the opposite. But we, you know, we just、uh, kick the can down the road and we continue 
uh, as if that's not a deal breaker. Um, that will doom a relationship. Absolutely. And I'm always surprised that people don't have the conversation of, do you want to have kids? That also. I never want kids ever. I don't like them. They're smelly. They're dirty. I don't want them. And you have spent your life dreaming about kids. You even named your kid at four years old. So uh, that's going to be a deal breaker. But a lot of people will stare at the abyss and they'll look at each other and they'll go, let's buy a house. And they'll, they'll just kick the can down the road and they'll wait for another time. And then, and then it blows up in their face. So many people do have the conversation, but they just don't want to face uh, that they are in, you know, in the throes of a deal breaker. 888-94-STARS. Uh, we're talking to Stan. He's got a book called Wired for Love, Wired for Dating. Uh, so uh, who has more difficult time in relationship these days, men or women, and why? That's a, a toss-up. I think because dating rules have changed quite a bit in terms of uh, the kind of dating apps and how people are doing this whole process. Um, I think they're both having a hard time. I think the main reason that people are having a difficult time is that we don't have any unifying idea or theories why people should even get married. Um, I have a, a, a good reason. It's a, it's a biological one, and the reason we're together is to survive. Uh, you know, this is what mammals and other animals do. They not only pair bond to have, you know, offspring and to protect them, but they're also, uh, you know, protecting each other from the dangers out there. And to be sure, there are dangers. There are things coming that nobody can predict. And if you don't have somebody that's in the foxhole with you, that you're not tethered to, that you can really bet your life on, then you're at a disadvantage. So, uh, you know, people are not really grounded today in terms of why. What, what is the purpose of being together? Why even do it? Why not pay somebody to do half the things we want another person to do? Uh, and th- the reason is, is that nobody, even if you pay them, really wants to, to take on the burden of another person wholly. That's the quid pro quo that mm. you and Donnie do. You, you decide you're going to be full burdens on each other. You take each other as pain in the asses, and that's the quid pro quo. You're doing things for each other that nobody really ever wants to do. Totally. And I find myself wanting to do them for him. Yes, and hopefully he's wanting to do them for you because if he doesn't, you're both sunk. Exactly. Let's go to line two, Patty, dating a guy who's also been divorced. Patty, welcome to the show. Oh, hello. I can't even believe I got through it first time. I've dialed in and I've gotten in this big habit of listening to your show every morning when I go to work. Thank you. And I have 30 minutes in the car and you make my day. I'm so glad. You totally glad. make my I'm day. I'm so glad. Thanks, Patty. Uh-oh. What's your question? Well, I'm 58. I'm, I'm 58. My boyfriend is 66. We have both have been divorced, dated quite a bit. I've been divorced 11, almost 12 years and him, 15, 16. So the issue that I feel that I have is that I am the girl that wants to run away Uh because I'm so afraid of being hurt. And I feel that. And I think, how do I change that? But there's a problem with me is that I don't want to argue. So how do you get down and get dirty and get through the stuff without having to feel like hurt or winning an argument? Well, there is no uh, there is no avoiding an argument. Uh, in fact, people who who will be conflict avoidant are actually threatening the relationship. If you think about it, uh, that relationship is conflict, and relationship also is bargaining and working things out. But if you're not strapped in for the ride, it's very hard to fight because anything you do can and will end the relationship. So by holding yourself outside of it, it actually makes the relationship a little more uh, uh, dangerous and unsafe. The way around that is actually to just dive in. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, you're going to be hurt, and uh, uh, but if that's the only thing you worry about, then uh, don't be in a relationship, but you could be hurt outside of a relationship as well. So if you really go in and you strap yourself for the ride, in for the ride, both of you, that actually gives you much more freedom to duke it out and to come up with, uh, with new ideas, things that work out for both of you. But you both have to believe in putting the relationship first. If, if one of you does and the other one doesn't, that's trouble. So if, you, if you're believing that the relationship comes first, you're strapped in for the ride, then you guys will make it work because nothing you do will break the relationship. That has to be affirmed by both of you. Patty, did something happen in a past relationship that made you close down your heart? You know, I yeah, I was married to um, a wonderful man who was an addict. And so for me, and I'm pretty sure my brain has been trained that th- what happened is I walked away after being hurt so bad by verbal abuse. 
So for me, it's like, which is worse, to have someone say something they don't mean because either he's intoxicated and if I'm the only one left with the memory because of him being too drunk right. to remember what the argument was about. Right. And so I, I guess in my own brain, I learned, say nothing and don't hurt and you'll be better. <laughs> And I tell myself that. I'm, I'm so aware of it. But your book is called, what is it called again? Wired for Love. Wired for Love? Wired yeah. for Love. Okay. okay, great. I mean, when I heard you talking about it in the beginning, I'm like, i got to get this book. Because we're both really loving people, John and I are. And I feel very grateful. I have so much love in my life. I am probably one of the happiest people I know. And so is he, and that's what attracted me to him was his happiness. And now we're 18 months in, and, you know, there's, it's just, you know, we're not past the honeymoon stage. I love that, and I love what you said, Jenny. Why do people think they have to give that up? I don't but know. But there is complacency, right? There's complacency that happens, I think, normally, and I think that comes from other relationships, and this is how it's supposed to be, so we buy into that. So my brain says, why do we have to buy into that? And you just confirmed that. And I want you to, I don't have to dive in. There's nothing better than being scared out of your mind to open your heart. But you also have to make sure that you are, you know, you broke the pattern of any type of abusive relationship. You know, you have to realize you deserve love. You deserve to be treated with the respect. And as long as you're getting that, there's no reason not to open your heart and dive in. And he says that, he says it to me, I think I was so devastated financially because of it that, you know, I don't trust sometimes. And I keep thinking there's no room, there's no room for trust here. He's loving, he's great, he's good, and he is imperfect, and he's an ass at times, so am I. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the buy in. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, oh, he wants to suggest something. Go ahead, Stan. Um, sit down with sit down with your guy and talk about what the relationship should be at this you know at our age this is really a discussion to have what should it be what should the relationship stand for what do we agree on that protects us both from the outside world and from each other uh, and do and do we really believe in this that is the way you govern uh, a relationship is with shared principles of governance and that is an adult conversation to have not who the person is but what do they agree in terms of what they will do how would they comport themselves in the relationship and it has to be good for you and it has to be good for him sounds like a plan to me thank you so much for being so uh, open and honest don't forget the book wired for love wired for dating i want to take one more phone call let's go to jill uh hey jill it's jenny and stand hi jenny how hi stand how are you guys doing i'm doing great I'm totally in love with my man, my husband, and we've been together for 11 years, and the honeymoon phase is still on. Love it! But it's, I know. You and Donnie remind me a lot of my husband, Lonnie, and I. Anyway, um, I did have some really rough relationships and life experiences. I was a Marine, well, once Marine, always Marine, and had some pretty bad experiences in the Marine Corps sexually. So, um... Anyway, I, I had my heart closed, and then I met Lonnie, and he, with, he had two beautiful children. I have two beautiful children. They were babies. Uh, got them all together, and Lonnie was so loving and caring. His first wife passed away, so and he was so in love with her. And um, Anyway, fast forward a little bit. Uh, he would come in, I would, I stayed at home with the kids for, you know, a little while, and he would come in from work and tiptoe in and get behind me and grab my waist and give me a kiss on my neck, and I would hit the ceiling and freak out. I'd be so upset with him, and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, man, I would want to punch him in the face. I mean, I was, like, really, really scared, you know? Yeah. And finally, I could, he, and he would get mad. He'd be like, why are you scared? What do you think, you know? Um, like he would, I would trigger something in him. He would trigger something in me. Well, finally, I basically I couldn't handle it anymore because I felt like I was sleeping with the enemy, and I wasn't oh, yeah. at all. So um, I went to the VA, and I and I went to a psychiatrist, and I found out that I had post traumatic stress disorder. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and actually knowing that and getting a diagnosis helped me because I knew I had to tell him that these feelings that I was feeling were not about him. It was just about past 
memories that I had. And I, I, we sat down and I talked to him about it. And he was so willing to allow me to go through this whole process. It brought us so close together. And I mean, it makes me want to cry right now because he, it ba- basically, we saved each other. We got to learn that, you know, sometimes we have this reaction and it has nothing to do with what's going on. Totally. It's in, yeah. And I think you had shared a story about that once too, Jenny, about putting a purse down or something and <laughs> you were freaking out and you couldn't figure out why. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's true. It's like this yeah. the problem is never the problem and if you if you can get curious with your partner and you find out about their history and their triggers, you have so much more compassion for the stuff that they've gone through. Um, we have to move on to another caller, but thank you so much for calling, girlfriend. By the way, I uh, agree thank with you. you have a great day. Oh good, yeah. Stan agrees with me. It, so. it, well, the curiosity factor is very very important. Most of the time things are not what they seem and we are misunderstanding each other most of the time. Things are actually not about love they're about threat about safety and security and memory that's so true it's so true let's go to line one gavin hey gavin it's jenny welcome to the show hello how How are are you good we've got stan tatkin with us also hey gavin listen i i commute 1200 miles every two weeks to and from work and i listen to your show all the time Woohoo! thanks gavin Love that. I am in a relationship right now where uh, a girl I fell in love with when I was 15 years old got away, mm. and uh, we were both married and ran into each other. We ended up having an affair. We've both since been divorced now from our spouses, and we're doing our best to maintain the relationship that I've wanted half my life. <laughs> and um, I am, when I have a problem, I come out with it right away because I know the more I simmer, the more angry I get. I've right. learned that about myself, right? Yes. Um, yes. She she is more of a conflict avoider because yeah. her ex-husband would verbally beat the crap out of her if she ever told him he did anything wrong. Mm. Right. So we're we're learning and growing together as that goes. And there's been some heated arguments, but we don't, you know, we made it a rule that neither of us ever threatened to leave the other over anything, no matter what, just like Good. you said earlier. You have to have that. I feel like you have to have that rule set from you the do. beginning that the word I'm gone just doesn't doesn't come out. I mean, it's, her, especially if her, it's a healthy relationship, you know, because if it's an abusive one, you, you better be out the door already. <laughs> but um, there was one right. thing with Donnie and I, when we knew we got married, it was like, there was something so safe that we felt so safe knowing you can't just run out the door. We have to face our problems and you do have to have that safety net. Right, Stan? Well, if you threaten the relationship, you're doing something that we know uh, negatively affects babies, children, and adults in a very profound way. That if, if you uh, even question whether the relationship will exist tomorrow, uh, it takes up so many internal resources that it's very hard to do your day, to be creative, to be a good parent. It is so destructive. That is why people should never, ever, ever do that, uh, unless they're going to leave, in which case, just leave. Don't use it uh, as a threat. Your partner, by the way, likely has had an experience even prior to her ex relationship uh, in terms of being afraid to talk. Um, do you read her face very well? Do you pay really close attention to her cues and to her signals? Absolutely. I know when she gets quiet, um, I know that something's bothering her, maybe big, maybe small, you know, it doesn't always have to be a life or death situation, but, um, I asked her about it and I was right. kind of curious if right. that was a mistake. Should I wait for her to feel comfortable to talk to me or is it okay to inquire? Great question. I, I think experiment with her, but if, if she is who I think she is, um, if you can guess what it is, that will open her up. In other words, uh, there's only two or three things that we will get upset about uh, in our lives that will really take us down. Two or three, maybe four things that are, you know, are kryptonite. And you probably know what those things are. And if you don't, you should probably study them and make a guess. Uh, the signs and symptoms are thus, okay? I'm guessing 
you're reacting to something I did just a moment ago or something that, uh, that you just came across. Um, making a guess is, uh, is easier for her than asking a question, especially if she's already under stress. It's very hard to answer a question like that under stress. So make a guess, and then if you're right, she'll say something. If you're wrong, she'll say something. God, that's a really good right. piece of advice. Well, and one thing, one thing that I've noticed that's helped is when it comes to – ha- she has children with him. Uh, two kids. And so when she's mad about something about him, I've learned that instead of bashing him myself and talking about how big of a piece of crap he is, I just listen to her and do my best to be empathetic instead of fuel the fire. Okay, you're doing great. Never take on the other person's battle because if you do too much, they could turn against you. Yep, then you're in there someone's business and you're in their car and they're in their lane and you're the bad guy. (laughs) Gavin, you sound like you got it going on, so I have to move on. But thank you so much for listening and calling. Thank you, sweetheart. I have Thank to go you, to yeah. line three. Diane has a great question. Hey, Diane, welcome to the show. Hey, Jenny, how Hi, are you? I've got Stan with me. Hi, and- Hi. what is your question, hon? Um, this sounds strange. Um, you know, I've been married for 16 years, and, you know, we've had our ups and downs. And I'm wondering, how do you know? You know, we've done therapy. There's unfortunately been... The, the calling of the, hey, you know what, we're done, which you said you know, we shouldn't do. Nope. Um, when, do you, when do you call it quit? I mean, when do you, you there's like no life left? Well, if there's no life left, that that will tell you, you, yeah, that will tell you, right? I mean, relationships that where there's no life le- left um, end coldly, uh, they don't end hotly, right? So if it's cold, it's done, and your body won't do it anymore. It's really a body decision, uh, but if there's still life there, then it ain't done. You don't want to end a relationship hot because you will be not really ending it, actually. D- do you know what it is that's pushing you towards the end? Um, my husband just lies about everything, like oh. everything. So he'll say, and it's not even like a big lie. It's, you know, he'll tell me he's at work when he's really at Costco. And I know that because like the bank, like the bank thing comes on my phone and it's almost as if he's trying to have this image. And throughout our marriage, I have found that I've tried to fill his bucket, which I can't do anymore. You've got to fill your own bucket. Amen. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but on the other hand, you know, we have three children and it does, it pulls at my heartstrings. Um, does he lie just about being at Costco or does he lie about bigger things? Um, you know what? Nothing like, I mean, like I, I've looked and believe me, I'm really good at that. <laughs> like affairs, anything like that. There's nothing like that, but it's just like where he, he goes it's almost as if he says if he's not at work that he's not fulfilling some type of of image of okay. being a hard worker does can that make so- sense can i tell you something yeah go ahead stan um what he's doing is not only bad for you it's bad for him and i think you need to sell it that way anything that is bad for him you you are on very strong ground because what he's doing every time he's basically showing himself uh, that he cannot be himself in the relationship, and that's going to drive him away. So, uh, you know, the two of you are to be yourselves in this relationship, or what's the point? Um, he's not doing that. He's kind of, <laughs> he's chickening out, and he's playing games with himself. This is bad for him. So tell him he's not to do that. At this point, it's unacceptable. Uh, this is not going to work for either of you. He's got to start to now even actually practice telling you, I'm in the car, I'm actually eating ice cream, I'm doing exactly what I'm not supposed to do, and here I am. So he's got to show up and he's got to be himself. Otherwise, he really should not be in the relationship, right? Absolutely. Need to have that conversation. And I would highly suggest getting into therapy with him. Um, I have to move on because we're running out of time. But uh, girlfriend, keep us updated, okay? Good luck. Good luck, sweetheart. Stan, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. It is. I just love everything you have to say. Wired for Love. I know you guys want to get that book. Also, Wired for Dating. You can go on his website, stantatkin.com. Love ya. Yeah. Take care. Be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. And sweaty palms from hanging on to t-